Charles, pa standby na please.
Hello and good morning. Welcome to the game weekend. My name is Boom Gonzalez. We are coming right off that hot game. Maybe to a lot of people, the best game in the series so far. I guess it depends on who you're rooting for. The LA Clippers force a game number seven in this first round encounter against the Dallas Mavericks. 104-97 was the final score. And uh, what a game it was, especially what Kawhi Leonard did in this one. 17 points in the third quarter. He ends up with 45, six and three, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, until now, what's unique about this series is there is no home team that has won yet in this best of seven series. And Luka Doncic, I guess by his standards, with a pedestrian 26 points in this game, 26, 11, and four. The LA Clippers uh, put the clamps on the Dallas Mavericks in that fourth quarter. We almost had 20 lead changes. I think it was 18 to be exact uh, lead changes in this game. As you see, the two superstars and their numbers 45 for Kawhi Leonard, who basically has really played well this whole series, even in their losses. And again, 26-11 uh, uh, for Luka Doncic for the Dallas Mavericks. So, as they say in sports, the two best words in round number one, we're going to have a game number seven. Uh, I know somebody who is going to be very sad about the result of this game. And I'm talking about our guest for today who will join us here on the game weekend. My good buddy, my partner on NBA Hype, Coach Charles Chu is with us to dissect this uh, game between the Dallas Mavericks and the Los Angeles Clippers. Coach Charles, let me check on you first. How are you feeling? You must be really uh, grumpy right now on this Saturday morning. Well, I, I'm honestly torn, Boom. When the Mavs were up 2-0, I went on a bold statement saying I still feel the Clippers would somehow win. It was like a gut feeling, but obviously I'm a big Luka fan. I love Boban Marjanovic, so I, I like the Mavs a lot. And yeah, it was tough. It looked like they were on their way to win this game, but you got to give credit to the Clippers. They, they just played so well, especially Kawhi. So you're okay. I know we're bothering you on a Saturday morning. We're invading you on a weekend. Uh, you're okay with this with this win? Did, uh, I, I know we have we've had discussions that uh, you wanted Dallas to advance in this series, and also that's question number one. Question number two: Why is it that no home team has won in this series, Charles? That's a good question. That's something we actually haven't seen almost in NBA history. Uh, we, we've seen, well, the last time we saw five road teams win the first five games would be, what, 23 years ago? I'm not too sure, honestly, what, what, what's the, what, what that, I mean, what the reason for that is, but it is very interesting. So I'm not, I'm not feeling down because why? We, we're we're going to be treated to another Game 7, as you said, and it's a chance to witness some greatness. Today, we witnessed Kawhi's greatness. The previous game prior to today, we witnessed Luka's greatness. So... No, I'm excited to see which one of these stars will shine the brightest in Game 7. Pinibiru lang kita, Coach. You know, I'm just <laughs> trying to, you know, uh, make you smile on a Saturday morning. Okay, let's break down the game. Four, double, uh, four players in double figures uh, for Dallas. But, as I said, and I don't know if you agree, a pedestrian uh, by his standards, Luka Doncic with uh, 26 points, Kawhi with 45, 6 and 3. I don't know if you'll agree with me, but he's really played well throughout the series, even in losses. But is this just a matter of who, which superstar did better? Is this the simple explanation for this Game 6 win? Well, I might agree there. Well, actually, Luca finished with 29 boom, but he had 11 of those. Sorry, 29, yes. Point. Yeah, and then he was relatively quiet. The interesting thing for me is that in the match wins prior to today, Tim Hardaway Jr. would average 23 points. And in their losses, he'd only have eight points per game. Today, he hit that number. He scored over 20 points. Yet, they lost. Uh, I, I thought the other guys needed to step up a bit. But you look at the Clippers now, on the other hand, their bench only scored four points combined. So it was interesting. And their second best player, apart from Kawhi, was Reggie Jackson. It wasn't even Paul George. Marcus Morris was one for 10 from the field. So I think Reggie Jackson was the X factor for the Clippers today, but Kawhi really, I'd say, outplayed Luka. Whenever he would guard Luka one-on-one, -on -one, of course, the Mavs would try their best to get that 
get Kawhi out of Luka. Kawhi did an excellent job making Luka work for everything. That's a big reason why Luka had, as you said, a subpar game for his standards. But Kawhi made some really crazy shots. He had a big third quarter, and then down the stretch in the fourth, he just took over again. Those shots over Luka, step back three, a shot over Finney Smith that basically put the game away. Kawhi, this might be one of the best games I've ever seen him play. Okay, bef before we get into a break, quickly, Coach Charles, how do you see Game 7? What is your prediction? I'm going with the Clippers, but my heart wants the Mavs to win. <laughs> okay, going with the Clippers. Your mind says Clippers, your heart says Dallas. All right, perfect. Okay, we'll stick with that. Coach Charles, don't go anywhere, okay? We're going to need you because when we come back, we will break down the upcoming Eastern Conference semis and the series between uh, Giannis Antetokounmpo, of course, and Kevin Durant, the big three, uh, James Harden, Kyrie Irving, all of these guys, they will be playing in the uh, Eastern Conference semifinals by tomorrow. All right, and Coach Charles will be breaking down that matchup after these. Hang on, please. We are back with you here on the game weekend. Now, the Brooklyn Nets and Milwaukee Bucks are on a collision course in the second round of the NBA Eastern Conference playoffs. Some people call it the semifinals beginning tomorrow. And still with us is NBA hype host coach Charles Chu to help us break down this matchup. Again, we are bothering him on this uh, Saturday morning. We appreciate your time, uh, coach. All right. so. The Western Conference, we've talked about that. There's going to be a Game 7. Now let's shift to, to this one. I want, I want to, to see or hear what you have to say, Coach, when they say that this matchup is the real Eastern Conference Finals. That's the hot take that we hear uh, around town when it comes to Giannis versus KD and the Big Three. What's your say in that one? Well, if Joel Embiid had, his, had a healthy knee, uh, I would disagree because I think the Sixers are really, really good if Embiid is healthy. But with his uh, lateral minister stare, whether it be small or not, that could be a game changer. So yeah, this is obviously one of the marking matchups of the playoffs in any side, in any remaining series. So it's going to be an exciting one, I think. Is this a game, offense versus defense, the three superstars and probably the three best offensive players in the league against uh, a Milwaukee Bucks team that uh, swept the heat and showed the kind of defense that uh, is lacking or has been lacking in the last two years for Milwaukee when it came to the playoffs. Is this an offense versus defense uh, encounter sa ating uh, laban bukas, coach? 
Well, it's tough because, uh, as you said, the Bucks have had their defensive challenges in the past few years. Obviously, the addition of Drew Holiday changed that. They changed their schemes a bit with Brook Lopez being willing to switch a little bit more. They also added P.J. Tucker, who is a great defender. But let's not forget the Bucks were also a great, or they have been a great offensive team the past few years. So I wouldn't say it's just offense versus defense, but I do believe that nobody is as good. Nobody is as good as the Nets when it comes to offense. They have the three best players in terms of scoring probably i mean combination of that three it's just incredible the talent that they have but it may boil down to who will be able to get stops how will the bucks be able to defend the nets and also how will the nets be able to defend the bucks they still have to find a way to stop Giannis. drew holiday could be a mismatch for either james harden or kyrie irving especially irving on the post and chris middleton has proven to be somewhat of a closer for for the bucks being the one to take the big shot so the Bucks don't lack the offensive firepower. It will boil down to who, who can make stops. Okay, jumping on what you're saying about who can make stops. Uh, if you're Brooklyn or you're a fan of Brooklyn and you know they're the best offensive team in some circles, they say it's probably the best offensive team of all time already. Um, you saw the numbers among the big three, uh, Kyrie, KD, and uh, Harden. What do you have to do on defense then, do you just have to be good defensively or do you have to be great in certain times of the game? As a coach, what do you explain to me as a fan if I want to come up with a first game win tomorrow? I think they have to take care of the little things. The Nets obviously are so talented. They have this tendency to be complacent at stretches. We saw it against the Celtics. I mean, there's no way the Celtics would even, should even have stayed close or should even have won a game because the Nets are just that talented, the Celtics are that banged up. But they tend to relax sometimes, you know, let go of the little things because they figure, you know what, we can just get it back on offense at any time. And against a team like the Bucks that are hungry, that are really determined, that feel it's probably championship or bust right now, mm. you can't let those happen. So the Nets have to stay focused, they have to pay attention to detail. This is going to be interesting, this matchup, because in their regular season matchups, these two teams, the, the big three of the Nets were never complete the same time, the same game against the Bucks. So I don't exactly know how they'll match up. You know, we saw a little bit of DeAndre Jordan guarding Yanis Antetokounmpo at times in the regular season, trying to hide Kevin Durant from that responsibility and save his mm. fouls perhaps. But you know, at the end of the day, I still think one of the stars will have to step up and be ready to defend Yanis, who is, well, the reigning MVP technically. Okay, speaking of stars, Tutukan natin tong si Yanis Antetokounmpo, Coach Charles. Did, do you see anything different from him this year as compared to the two-year run? I only talk about the two-year run so far because obviously, you know, the MVP uh, awards that he won and then they were blowing out teams in the regular season only to fizzle out in the playoffs. Is there something that you see different in this superstar, Yanis Antetokounmpo, of the Milwaukee Bucks for this year's playoff run? I think he's matured a lot. Uh, he's developed his outside shot a bit more. He's more confident to take that shot, whereas in the past, he kind of just dropped down and hoped he missed. Now, you know, he's legitimately legitimately had a lot of huge jumpers. He's not afraid to take it anymore. So I think that's going to be huge because obviously when he puts his head down, that's the, his strength. Nobody can really stop him. He's like a freight train out there, just so talented, so long, and just so skilled. So it, it's tough. And if this jumper will drop, that's going to be a game changer. And it's interesting because at some point, at one point in this regular season, I actually, I, I forget the exact numbers right now, but I was tweeting Yanis stats. And this was before Joel Embiid got hurt. And right. He was still you know, neck and neck with Nikola Jokic in the Embiid race. And you look at his numbers, they were almost as good as his regular season numbers when he won the MVP awards the past two years. So Yanis has not dropped down one bit in terms of performance, and he's only gotten better. And then the fact that he now has help, I think that makes him more dangerous. Now, he doesn't always have to handle the ball. They have other playmakers. I know you like the Drew Holiday deal over Eric Bledsoe. Uh, <laughs> as a matter of fact, but now they can let, let him play, be the screener a lot more, and pick and rolls, and he can just catch it on the roll. But they have a lot of versatility now when it comes to offense for the Bucks. Why do you have to bring up Eric Bledsoe? I was having a great morning, and you have to bring that up. Quick, quick lang, Coach Charles. Game one tomorrow. Who takes it? I think the Bucks will win game number one. All right. Thank you very much for making time for us, Coach Charles. And uh, I'm sure it won't be the last time for you to uh, be chatting with all of us here on Always the, happy to talk to you. Basketball and, and with you, Boom, it's such an honor. Thank <laughs> you Salamat.
That means a lot. Thank you very much, Coach Charles Chu from, of course, NBA Hype, helping us here at the game weekend. And you can catch all the Game 1 action of the Nets and the Buck series tomorrow on One Sports and on NBA TV Philippines, all right? So that's the schedule, 7.30 a.m., Brooklyn Nets and Milwaukee Bucks live Game 1. Or you can watch it 9 a.m., Brooklyn Nets versus Milwaukee Bucks delayed uh, telecast of game number one and then we will come on of course to talk about that game and uh, we'll have another friend uh, with us for sure tomorrow all right we call for time to take uh, oh sorry I think we're going to show uh, a picture one of the pictures that went viral yesterday I, uh, the D book picture and uh, the Kobe picture these are some of the images from uh, yesterday's games Kobe of course D book LeBron James uh, some of the stuff that we saw, and this is just a great picture between D-Book and LeBron James, paying respect to the great ones before him as D-Book advances to the second round of the NBA playoffs. We'll have more discussions tomorrow on the game weekend. Thank you for joining us. My name is Boom Gonzalez, reminding you that every day is game day, including weekends. Bye, everybody.